Oh, hello. This is Drew with Michigan Adventure Life. And this is John. And we're out here at the Sulak boat ramp on the Pier Marquette River. What are we doing, John? We're fishing for steelhead. We already saw one monster come jumping down here. Yeah, Kara really wanted to get in and chase it. John's got the old double-handed spinning rod. I'm out here with my eight weight. Uh, you know, we're just gonna try and get it done. Thanks for joining us. Get back. We saw some fish throwing themselves out of the water. I think that means this is the spot, John. A lot of sections of the Pier Marquette River are flies and artificial bait only. So what we're using is these little wet flies. They're supposed to look like a salmon egg. It's really cute. It is a little shallower over here in that it doesn't drop off as fast. So I can wade in over here. So all I'm doing is stripping line out, letting it get downstream a bit. When I get to the length I want, I just flop it back upstream, trying to work my way across the river. When your line starts out running your leader, you just pick it up and dress it. Using wet flies and sinking line, false casting is your enemy. Uh, in fly fishing, you false cast a lot, you know, go back and forth to get your length and get it right where you want it. But the more you false cast these heavier rigs, the more likely you are to screw yourself up. And actually, the river current's a little fast. I'm going to reel in and put, uh, put some weights on the end of this. Turn it into chuck and duck fishing. So we just got a couple of these little clamp-on weights. And the idea is, you just want to put them right where your leader meets into your fly line. So that it starts to sink that part faster. There we go, just got a couple of those pinch weights on there. The reason they call this chuck and duck fishing now is because with a fly line, when you put weight there, it means it's gonna come a lot lower when you're resetting your cast. And so you're gonna wanna watch out and sometimes you gotta duck. Now, with rivers this fast, you really wanna watch how your lure reacts. So, right there, you see my lure? And I'm going to drop my weights in the water. You can watch it slowly fall back. And that way it gives you an idea of the drift speed of your lure and your weights. And if you need to add more weight or not. This is pretty good considering how fast the river is. My sinking line is slowing it down a bit. So I'm going to stick with that get a few casts in. At a certain point with the sinking line, you get so much stripped out, it's going to be physically impossible to cast back. So you got to strip a bunch in. Don't lose control of it because it'll get tangled faster. Once you have your line up, you gotta lift and then flip it back up like a roll cap. And then slowly push your line out as it's going past you. From there, it's almost like bouncy bottom, just like John was doing. From there, all you're trying to do is direct your lure down into obstacles. You're basically trying to get stuck almost. You're just going anywhere there could be a fish hiding, and they will be hiding. It's not like they're going to be sitting in the open waiting to eat right now. Oh, that's a pretty good spot there. That is a really good spot. If you get a really good line, you just end up sitting here stripping 100 yards of line out. Trying to get down there. Just trying to get up under those trees. Pull it 
back up a little and let it work its way back down. To try to work as much of the river as possible without moving very much. The more you move, the more you're disturbing stuff. So like I'll even pull up and then just slowly work my way over this way. And I'll hand line in some line to get a little bit further and work it farther over. Oh, the river is super fast. What you can do when you get to the end of the line, you can do what's called a swing. Where you let it tighten up and you let the current of the river drag your weight across the entire river. Uh, the trick to keeping your weight up, you got to let your line get all the way out. you got to let your line get straight, keep your tip up, and then you're just slowly working the weight out of the water with this. And then when you see your leader, that's when you pop it back up river. And try not to hit yourself. That's the chuck and duck part. You hit yourself sometimes. It's been a wet, cold day so far. It's not raining anymore, though. That's true. Rain's gone. Can't complain about that. Look, I didn't get hooked up on anything. That's great. That's amazing. I don't even know how I made it down there. Onward! Well, we could have kept fishing. Yeah, we'll just reset and eat some lunch and go back fishing. We're just camped up at the Sulak campground just up the road. So we're just tying our rods right on top so we don't have to unset anything. Uh, and then we're gonna, you know, run back up there, eat some lunch, get our rigs reset, and probably take the fisherman's walk down and see if we can't hike in some fishing. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Good girl. We came down to that bend in the river, trying to look for places to wade in. There are not a whole lot of places that both look like they have good fish and good wading. We're gonna have John go up to that point right there and float his line down this away, because this whole bedding in here is downed rocks from the cliff side, and that's that's what the fish want, man, rocks and gravel. And then I'm gonna go up there a little ways and work that straight away. I think we're just gonna end up shore casting for this so we don't get hurt. So to give you an idea of what obstacles I'm aiming for when I talk about aiming for obstacles, my long lines, the close ones I'm letting float under those branches where they stick in and then further out here there's that other tree that comes in basically anywhere a fish might want to hide and then on my long lines when I cast across I'm trying to aim for those but they're harder to hit because of the flow of the river and then once I make it all the way to the bend that's when I hold my line and let it go across and then reel up under all of that when I'm doing this from the shore, I actually have to fly cast a little bit because I gotta get further out. But instead of just a bunch of back casts, I do one good back cast. Oh, and I get it stuck in a tree. Time out. Clear. Clearly that back cast was too good. Less of a good back cast. You almost wanna literally just have your leader going behind you and really pay attention to what's behind you. And then you're coming back and propelling it forward as far as you, as you can. And you're just letting the line go, letting the excess line in your line hand go. So you got me about halfway across the river, whereas before I could just dip, you know, my nine feet of my rod width out. Every once in a while when you're using flies, you wanna pull them in, check your fly, check your knot, check your leader, make sure everything's still, make sure everything's still copacetic, ready to go. If you're ever in a river and you're having problems getting your line unhooked from the bottom, you can try wading in a little bit, getting the line as close as you can to the water and yanking in different directions because you're just hung up on something. You just got to find the right angle to break it, uh, to break it free or, you know, to break it off, whichever, whichever happens. Finish reeling in this massive... Bringing in a log? Log trout. The evasive. Streptococcus. The elusive log trout. Ooh! Oh, that was my leader and everything. Okay, I'm calling it a day. I lost my tippet leader. So I think, I think I'm calling it a day for, uh, for, for wet flies. We've been out here a couple hours. We went out a couple hours this morning. Now we're just gonna, you know, 
go back into camp and see the dog before it gets way too dark out here to uh, find our way back. <laughs>